Welcome back. This is AP Environmental Science. This is Chapter 3, and we're going to talk about ecosystem productivity. And so it's important as environmental scientists and ecologists to determine how much energy is captured, how much solar energy is captured by the producers. From there, we can determine how many other organisms can be uh, supported by that ecosystem, uh, just based off of that knowledge of how much energy is in the system. And then we can better manage and protect that ecosystem. We can determine the health of that ecosystem. And uh, that measurement can tell us a whole lot about that ecosystem. So if we look at an African uh, savanna, we know that the sun is going to shine down on the, all the different types of grasses here. And those grasses are going to capture about 1% of the total solar energy that's um, coming down on that ecosystem. And only about 40% is actually going to be used for growth and reproduction of those producers. And so if we can determine how much energy is captured by the producers, then we can determine how much, based off of that energy number, we can determine how much, uh, or how many, excuse me, uh, herbivores or primary consumers can be supported by that ecosystem and then therefore also determine how many secondary consumers or top predators can be uh, supported by that ecosystem. So that's a very important thing to measure this idea of productivity. Productivity is just the uh, rate of energy captured over the span of time and so uh, we have two measurements. We have gross primary productivity, which is known as GPP. And that is going to be the total amount of solar energy that the producers capture, right? And uh, this is going to be in units of time. And so that's the, the total amount of solar energy captured is the gross primary productivity the NPP or the net primary productivity is going to be the total energy captured, so GPP, minus the energy respired by producers. So you must remember that uh, plants, they not only go through photosynthesis and uh, capture solar energy and, and take in CO2, but they also release CO2. They go through cellular respiration just to uh, go through their daily functions. And so they respire a certain amount of CO2. So based off of that, we can determine uh, GPP. We can determine uh, how much CO2 is taken up by photosynthesis. So that's what we're going to look at, and that's going to help us determine overall productivity of an ecosystem, how much CO2 is taken up. And so because during daylight hours, the plant is both taking up CO2 through photosynthesis and also respiring uh, CO2, in just functioning, its daily functions, uh, we can measure uh, how much, uh, we have to isolate a few variables here. And so what we want to do is we want to measure CO2 taken up during daylight hours. And then we're going to want to uh, go back in the dark or in the evening and measure how much CO2 is produced in the dark. How much CO2 is produced in the dark. Based off of this number, the differences of CO2 we can determine uh, CO2 taken up during photosynthesis. If you need more help with that, I can help you with this equation. It's going to be in units of kilograms of carbon that are absorbed per meter square of land per day. Sometimes you'll find that uh, the time span changes or uh, this will change to grams, but mainly these two remain the same. NPP is net product primary productivity and in most ecosystems, this ranges between 25 and 50 percent of GPP. And this is simply because of just inefficiencies, the second law of thermodynamics, these types of things. And so if we look at this diagram, which is in your book, 99 percent of solar energy is reflected or passes through because of the spectrum of light. And so 99 percent is completely wasted uh, that reaches the ground. 1% of solar energy striking producers is captured by photosynthesis. 
and this is going to be considered GPP. Out of that GPP, or that 1%, 60% approximately is lost in just its daily functions in cellular respiration. And then 40% of that 1%, or 40% of GPP, supports the growth and reproduction of producers, and that's NPP. We showed you the slide in class. You can pause it here and look at that calculation again. It's important. And then this diagram as well is important. This shows you different uh, ecosystems around the globe. It's going to tell you the oops, it's going to tell you the net primary productivity. It's going to be in grams per year, and <clears throat> you can see here we have very productive uh, ecosystems like swamps and marshes, tropical rainforests, and then it goes down to deserts, which are not very productive. And then we also have marine ecosystems like coral reefs and salt marshes, marshes that are very productive. And then all the way down to very little productive productivity in ocean, open ocean. And so depending on these numbers, we can then determine, well, swamps, marshes, tropical rainforests, coral reefs, they can uh, sustain and support uh, abundant life. Lots of biodiversity it can support and uh, deserts and open oceans, not as much, uh, not quite as much. And it's all dependent on two factors, sunlight, solar energy, and then water abundance. And so these two factors right here are going to basically be contributing factors to their overall or their net primary productivity. That is ecosystem productivity, and uh, I'll be posting other videos on various topics in Chapter 3.